Welcome everyone to an all new episode of PlayStation Megabits. It is getting warm outside, it is almost summer, and with summer means summer game announcements, summer game fest, summer game bang. PlayStation has been staying quiet for a little bit, which means they're probably getting poised to make some huge announcements. With all that speculation, one big news story in particular is causing a lot of people to turn their heads, and that is the theoretical acquisition of Square Enix by PlayStation. That's what we're talking about today on PlayStation Megabit. So grab your buster sword and let's go. Square Enix recently unloaded all of their Western divisions, which caused a big stir. A lot of people were surprised by that. Some people weren't very surprised by that because there seemed to be kind of a tumultuous relationship between the mothership, which is, you know, the Japan division, the home of where Square Enix comes from, and all these Western developers ever since the Tomb Raider reboot trilogy came out and was scoffed as being an underperforming series. And of course, we have the Marvel's Avengers, which did not do any favors to the Western Division. And then Guardians of the Galaxy, which also was seen as underperforming. And the writing was kind of on the wall that things weren't working out for Square Enix in regards to Western developers. So Square has offloaded all of those divisions, sold them off, and now they are focusing back on their Japanese developed games. And recently it has been talked about that this has paved the way for Square Enix to be acquired by someone. And a lot of speculation, of course, went one of two ways. Um, they have a great relationship with Nintendo, releasing games like Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy, all these HD 2D games. And of course, they're very cozy with PlayStation right now with the Final Fantasy VII Remake series, Final Fantasy XVI, and Forspoken being just a few of the console exclusives for Square Enix in the PlayStation camp. Now word comes that PlayStation is looking to, in fact, acquire Square Enix. These are all rumors, but a lot of people are talking, a lot of people with reputable sources are indicating that this is very much a thing that could possibly be happening, and lo and behold, look where it falls in the calendar, right around the time that everybody makes their big megaton announcements. Now with all this being said, there are two schools of thoughts in regards to all of these acquisitions that have been happening between Microsoft and PlayStation back and forth. A lot of people see this as a net positive because these larger studios are able to funnel um, more money into these acquired studios and give them more resources and um, more space to breathe so that they can really execute some fantastic games. You look at what Sucker Punch has been able to do with Ghost of Tsushima. Um, you look at everything that Bethesda is now able to do with being under the Xbox banner. Um, so some people would say that Sony acquiring Square could do really great things for Squaresoft. Um, Squaresoft. <laughs> I'm old. And you know, I tend to kind of agree with that to some extent. I feel like Square is one of those companies that always produces really great games, but boy, do they make some bonkers business decisions up at the top tier. A lot of things that Square Enix does really causes you to kind of scratch your head and wonder, what the hell are you doing? And a lot of this talk of recently looking into blockchain and NFTs and just like, just Whoa! That just makes me want to vomit. And you know, I, I would think that if a Square Enix was brought under the banner of PlayStation, uh, Sony could do a lot to kind of steer that ship in the right directions. Then of course, there's a lot of people who are saying that this is going to cause a big problem with exclusivity. Square Enix has a great relationship with Nintendo right now, so if PlayStation acquires them, what happens then? Um, well, we live in a time right now where um, a larger division like a Microsoft or a Sony acquiring a game studio does not necessarily mean that that studio will release games exclusively for that platform 
Sony recently acquired Bungie and has stated that Destiny will continue to be multi-platform. You got the same thing going on right now with uh, Call of Duty will stay multi-platform even though it's technically owned by Xbox. So if PlayStation were to acquire Square Enix, I don't necessarily think that would mean that Switch will no longer HD 2D games on the Switch, but maybe, just maybe, that means that PlayStation will get those titles and they currently do not. I would be very excited. Uh, I don't think that Switch HD is very HD. My idea of HD and Nintendo's idea of HD are very different things. So I think that would be a net win to see games like Dragon Quest III Remake, which has the HD 2D spin on it, on a 4K device that would be absolutely breathtaking. Plus, maybe we'd get those pixel remasters that have been locked to the PC side. That's, that, that would be great to see on PlayStation Plus, right? So are any of you surprised that I would find this news to be exciting? Uh, I am a huge Square fan from back in the day. Final Fantasy is the franchise that got me into gaming as a kid, and PlayStation obviously is the place that I love to play. And there's a there's a history there. There is a connection between Square and PlayStation. You look back to the PS1 days, Final Fantasy became synonymous with PlayStation after leaving the Nintendo branch. So I think it would be cool if Square Enix officially called PlayStation home. I think it's a perfect fit. As a PlayStation super fan, and as a Square super fan, I got a chocobo. I'm very hopeful that this turns out to be true. I think that PlayStation could do a lot to kind of nudge Square along and maybe we'd get those Final Fantasy VII remake installments a little bit faster and we wouldn't see those giant delays and some of those misguided business decisions if the folks at PlayStation were at the helm. But I want to know what you think. What's your take on acquisitions in general? What's your take on the relationship between PlayStation and Square Enix? Is this something that you wanna see move forward? Let me know right here in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of PlayStation Megabits. We'll see you back here next month where maybe we'll have the answers to these questions and more right back here on an all new episode of PlayStation Megabits. Bye-bye.